Turning now to our World War One at Home series this week. To mark the centenary of the start of the Great War, BBC London has teamed up with the Imperial War Museums to unearth local stories from the global conflict. The Royal Arsenal in Woolwich was vital to Britain's war effort, employing tens of thousands of people making weapons and ammunition. But what went on there was a closely guarded secret, as historian Ian Bull explains. <laughs> The Royal Arsenal was by far the most important military factory in the British Empire. Britain could not have considered taking part in the First World War had it not been for the Royal Arsenal. A hundred years ago, going in and out of this gatehouse, we would have seen thousands and quite probably tens of thousands of people. The Arsenal worked in very great secrecy. Everybody was searched every time that they arrived for work, sometimes twice and the same would happen on the way out. Sketching within the arsenal was forbidden, even speaking about what you did, uh, what was forbidden. Up there on the right-hand side of the road is the former Royal Carriage Department. On the other side of the road, at the back, you can see the Royal Arsenal's headquarters building. In front of that is the Royal Carriage Department's gun mounting shed. Here is the Firepower Museum of the Royal Regiment of Artillery. Over by the river are the two little guard houses that used to guard the Arsenal's Watergate. Over here is the other branch of firepower and the Greenwich Heritage Centre, the Arsenal's Museum. Over there, Tower Place, formerly the officers' mess. At the beginning of the war, the majority of the workforce would have been male. But as the war progressed, an ever greater number of women were called to work here. And eventually there would be tens of thousands of them. I had to be down there at half past seven and worked till half past eight at night. And uh, I went down, went home to my mother and I cried all the evening. She said, what are you crying for? I said, I'm going to get killed down. I don't like it. I said, it's all explosives. I had your prayers before you go in. I was really terrified. Even after the First World War started, though, the relationship uh, was far from straightforward. So when we first went in there, there was no toilets for the women. So the men used to have to use the toilets from eight till nine, and the women used to use them from nine till 10. We're currently in the uh, Firepower Museum, the Museum of the Royal Regiment of Artillery. It's a very fine example of what most of the buildings between 1800 and 1900 looked like. You would have seen this type of wrought iron and cast iron construction in the roof. What we're looking at here is a typical product of the Royal Arsenal. It's an 18-pounder field gun. You might notice that this version still has wooden wheels. It's made in the Royal Carriage Department at the beginning of the First World War. By the end, though, most of them would be steel. These weapons were used to fire no less than 100 million rounds during the First World War. This building is a very fine example of one of the uh, Arsenal's many manufacturing buildings. Down beneath me are the last examples of uh, the Royal Arsenal's once extensive railway line. And this is the only example of the narrow gauge that survives. Narrow railways can go around much sharper corners. And this allowed the narrow gauge railway to visit not just every workshop, but every workbench and every forge. I don't think there's any doubt that the Arsenal will have to go down as the United Kingdom's greatest ever factory. An extraordinarily important site uh, which really should not be forgotten. So interesting and there's plenty more on the impact of the First World War. Just go to bbc.co.uk forward slash forward slash even WW1.